<clears throat> so, hello everyone to a new or one I could say one of the first painting videos I start to make, will make in the future. Um, I will try to show you how I achieved the camo pattern on those cloaks. It's the same way I did on the Black Phalanx Halo Troopers for the Carrion Pass event. Um, I'll go through the colors when during painting. Um, yeah, well, we'll see where we'll get. I have set the focus up to over here, and if everything goes well, I will stay on camera for the whole time. So, <clears throat> I've already started um, the base code with Steel Legion Drab Citadel base color up to three layers at the top of the miniature two layers below here because we don't need it to cover that much next step would be highlighting with sandry dust getting a bit of contrast into the whole thing.
I don't mind that it gets a bit stripy because the next layer of paint and after that the whole camel pattern will um, overlay everything. As with the base coat I try to focus on areas that would get the most of the light. Next layer is Rakoth Flash. Now I take into account the folds on the cloak too. Seems I'm really bad at talking while 
doing this. So this is 11 minutes right now, it's still pretty rough. Um, next step would be applying the camo pattern. To obscure a bit of that. Roughness. The camo pattern basically um, consists of morphing brown and rhinox hide. Should have prepped those into my wet palette before beginning this. Learn the lesson for next time. Also, I find when I am doing a live stream, I talk a lot more, but that's probably because there are people actively joining and adding and questioning, so there is a bit of conversation that now is missing. So let's have a look at the... original model so we have the huge spots of morphing brown doing several layers to get it a bit uh, shadowy and contrasty then we'll add the rhinox hide pattern over it and Wherever we want a white dot, we place a dot of Rhinox hide before that. So I start quite thin with a Mornfang brown to line out my pattern. It's almost to, almost too regular. Trick is to be irregular with your camo, which can be quite hard. Because you will tend to do it very regular. So now with a bit less water to the paint we'll get a 
bit of contrast to it. Get the brown a bit deeper while at the same time creating light and shadow, so to say, giving the giving a few more hues to the individual dots of brown. Same with the rhinoxide. I'll try to place as many of the rhinoxide <coughs> <coughs> sorry spots right beside a monfring brown one, overlaying them a bit. And at the same time, being a bit more pointy, a bit more, yeah, almost, almost stippling to create finer details. And keep in mind that we have to place our white dots with the rhinoxide There's that pattern, patternism again. Just giving it a bit more depth with a second layer here and there. The dots are made with, with one gray. So we're at 20 minutes so far. Oh, that's the wrong one. Okay, next time I 
should prep those paints properly. Try not to hit the middle of the brown dots. Too often you want it to be irregular. Something like that. So far, so good. It's uh, might be good advice. Um, to always keep the model you painted before as a reference so you don't fall into those that um, patternism I mentioned earlier so that you don't paint the brown areas in the same spots as you have done on the previous miniature. If you don't check you will probably end up with, with two quite similar looking model. So we'll wait a bit more till this is dry. The next step would be dry brushing with Wilson Gray. I haven't usually I would have done this at the, right at the beginning but as the cloak is quite bright it would be very useless and we need it to get it a bit more blendy and uh, to highlight, actually to highlight the camel pattern. And in that case I will dry brush the rest of the model for pre-shading. For that I use a older part of Ultron Grey where the paint is almost dry. I don't use the paint from a wet palette for dry brushing. And I also try to not hit the moist part of my paper towel. So we want it to be quite clean on the cloak so I get most of the white paint out of the brush by brushing it on the parts of the model that will get painted later. You may have noticed that he is missing his foot here. I did build those without the instructions at hand because I'm an old Games Workshop veteran building models and I just didn't see 
that the foot isn't attached to the cloak. Happens to the best. So now we have enough of the paint out of our brush and can thus blend the camo pattern into the cloak and give it a rough appearance at the edges highlighting the cloak a bit more of the camera again. So, and last but not least, it's almost done, but you see the little difference to the other cloak over here, I hope. Last step is per usual, or as I use it quite often. It's not camo, just coincidence, it's Agrax Earth Shade. I'm going to use it right out of the pot, but don't let it pool. Only maybe over here where the folds are the deepest. Not much, just try to get an even layer on every part of the cloak to filter filter everything a bit. It's not for creating any shadows. We did this at the beginning when we laid out our base coat. can let it pool here or there, but not, not much. Just down, down here where it will pool the most. There wouldn't be any shadow, so we don't want to paint it there. And you can even rub some of it off the model with your thumb to have a bit of an additional highlight. at the top of the model. So when this is dry it will uh, be quite matte and not as shiny as it is now. Pretty much like the original one. So that's roughly 30 minutes of watching me painting and listening to me talk. I hope the quality is good. I hope you'll enjoy this. See you somewhere later maybe doing a live stream answering questions about that pattern. Stay tuned, be excellent, goodbye.